So uh, in June of this year, uh, there will be the Football World Cup in Russia. And as perhaps you've noticed, everyone who's interested in football tries to predict the outcomes of the, the matches and eventually the winner of the World Cup. This is Lucas Maestre, a PhD student of the IC School at EPFL. And yes, he's working on predicting the winner of the next World Cup. I guess there's, uh, there's lots of people uh, trying to predict outcomes of, uh, of uh, sports games in general. Uh, well, football in particular, but also other sports. But of course, Lucas is using mathematical models to do so, and he's not the only one. I, I guess for many, it's, uh, it's an opportunity to do some uh, marketing. So for example, there are big banks that are uh, trying to use macroeconomic variables such as GDP and so on to try to predict, you know, next winner of the World Cup. Um, as, a, as a research field, I guess it's, uh, it's not really... Um, maybe that, uh, that popular, but I guess it's one application of a broader class of models, which are comparison models, which can be used to predict sports outcomes, but also to predict, say, preferences of people based on choices that they make. In fact, Lucas' PhD thesis is more general than just predicting football. So my thesis is on uh, choice models, basically, which has applications to uh, human opinions and preferences, and also on, uh, for example, modeling game outcomes. Okay, so how can football be modeled? As a starting point, we took a popular model of match outcomes, uh, which assumes that every team is characterized by a skill. So based on previous outcomes of matches, we can estimate the skill. Now, as players join and leave the team, the skill changes. And so in order to address that, we had to develop a new method. So by using a, a powerful machine learning technique called approximate Bayesian inference, we were able to learn these time varying skills and improve the accuracy of the predictions by 10 to 15%. Yes, because if you follow football, you know that Switzerland has greatly improved to the point where it may now win the next World Cup. Maybe. Who knows? As a picture is worth a thousand words, I brought you this graph, which shows the evolution of the skill over years of the four teams that compose Group E of the upcoming World Cup. That's Brazil, Switzerland, Costa Rica, and Serbia. And as you can see here, for example, Brazil is clearly the strongest teams of the four nowadays. But it's not as strong as it was in 1970, when it had really a golden generation of players. Uh, then Switzerland uh, really improved over the last uh, two decades or so, but it's still pretty close to Serbia and Costa Rica. So those games are going to be uh, pretty hard for Switzerland to win. So according to Lucas' model, Brazil looks stronger than Switzerland. Or at least, according to the model, its numerical level is larger. Basically, it's uh, one number that uh, encodes how strong a team is. And the idea is that if you have two teams that play against each other, uh, you look at the difference between the skill and the team that has a higher skill is more likely to win than the team that has a lower skill. And the bigger the difference is, the more likely the first team is to win against the second. Now, Lucas' major contribution here is to take into account the fact that teams' levels change over time. The, the usual way to do it is just to assume that this skill is uh, constant, right? So there's just one number that represents the skill of a team. Uh, but then the problem is when you look at data sets that go over many, many years, uh, as the more the old data you add actually doesn't necessarily make the model better because uh, that data is stale and actually things have changed. Um, so then you might think, okay, but let me just use, you know, the last 10 years. But how do you really define how many years you want to use? And in any case, it's never really good to, you know, have a kind of a hard threshold. So then um, uh, basically one way to circumvent that is to postulate inside the model itself that this skill can change over time. And um, doing this is actually in itself already pretty difficult, but it turns out if you do it, um, you can do it in a ba Bayesian way, uh, essentially for free. So if you want the, the, the Bayesian um, approach is uh, not absolutely necessary to, to solve this problem, but um, as you can have it essentially for free, why not? Because then it also gives you some uh, measure of uncertainty about the skill. What are the data that the model relies on? So we use uh, basically um, a database of historical matches between uh, national teams of, uh, of all continents that contains, I don't remember how many, but 
tens of thousands of matches going back to the uh, beginning of uh, last century, basically. Cool, but how reliable is the model? Are there important aspects that the model does not capture? What I've show, shown you here is, uh, is a model that just tries to, to assign a, a skill parameter to each team, right? And so you are not really looking at the players inside the team. But uh, obviously you could also go kind of one level deeper and actually look who is playing inside the team. And uh, we did this for the Euro 2012, uh, 2016, sorry, two years ago. And uh, that was pretty good. Now the problem is you need to know for every match uh, who was playing, right? And so that's a, a data that's pretty hard to get. And um, for example, if you want to predict, uh, you know, games in the World Cup, you'd need to know who is going to be on the, on the team. So we were able to do this like one hour before the match, but, um, but it, it complexifies things quite a bit. But that's one way to somehow, for example, take into account whether Messi is going to play or not. Okay, now to the big question. Who will win the next World Cup? Are Lucas' predictions out? Not yet for, the, for this year's World Cup. It's still uh, in the works, okay, cool. <laughs> but we'll have it soon. <laughs> <laughs> so be sure to check out Lucas' website, kickoff.ai, to see if his 2018 predictions will turn out to be accurate. Football can't really be predicted at any better than 70% in the, in the, in the long run. There's a professor at uh, UCSD uh, who has a great rant about this calling soccer uh, Poisson noise and comparing it to numerology. This deep learning, this purely data-based approach allows us to uh, come up with a solution much more quickly than the traditional, more tedious AI approach.